the principal of uh, Moira Methodist College, the school management committee, school management representatives, teachers and and ancillary uh, staff, uh, ministry officials, and students. A uh, very good uh, good afternoon to each one of you, Nisambola uh, Vinaka. It is indeed an honor to visit this office for the first time. I knew that I had uh, an office for the Western Division, but I didn't know where it was located and how it looked like. So here I am, uh, uh, this is my first visit, and uh, I'm very pleased that during my first visit, I'm also meeting the representative from the, um, uh, from the management team as well as uh, Moira uh, College and, and the team uh, and the staff. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of my visit today, as you can see, is to hand over a lot of items for a school which is yet to be reopened. Uh, the donation were given to us by the um, Korean government and the people of Korea, and the, it is their commitment under the special grant assistance program that they have been uh, giving us a number of items uh, to assist schools in the preparation towards the reopening of schools. So part of the uh, assistance comes uh, with items that you can see. It's not just uh, agriculture or industrial arts, but it's more to do with uh, science uh, materials. In some school, uh, we are giving um, projectors uh, with um, interactive boards, uh, smart television, overhead projectors. So there's a range of items. And from the range of items, uh, we decide which school will get what. And I must say to you that Moira uh, School uh, uh, College is getting maximum, which is worth around $28,000. Unlike uh, other schools where we've given them desks and tables and probably around $10,000 or $12,000 worth of material uh, items. But for Moira College, it was our decision that uh, it's a new school, yet to be opened. We need to prepare that school well, and therefore they should get all these items. I'm very pleased to um, hand over these items uh, to you all. While handing over these items, I also would like to reiterate the importance of uh, taking care of these items and ensuring that all these items are recorded in your inventory. Extremely important. We have seen in the past that when the head of schools don't take care of such items, then you tend to lose this item and gradually uh, most of the teaching resources depletes in the school setting. So it is extremely important that you uh, make a record of what you are receiving and we have also made a record of what we are giving. Uh, and that way we'll be uh, checking on the schools to ensure that the items are still there. Um, and uh, at this juncture, I want to thank the Korean government and the people of Korea uh, for, for coming forward with such assistance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have been uh, visiting schools uh, in the last couple of weeks. And the purpose of this visit is to actually see how well the schools are prepared to receive their students. Uh, the time is not easy for any one of us uh, with COVID-19, as you all know, um, has created havoc around the world. And uh, Fiji is not spared. Um, we are going through that turmoil. We have lost uh, lives and livelihoods. Uh, there was a period, uh, I would say, the uncertainty was so high, uh, we didn't know uh, which direction we were going. But the direction <coughs> government took, we were certain that this would be the way forward. And in our view, uh, the <coughs> government's decision uh, was the right one, where we made a decision to uh, work on vaccination. Just work on vaccination. And we went ahead and started our vaccination program, which is now compared with any other country in the world, for that matter. Even uh, Australia can boast about uh, their vaccination rate, so can Fiji. We, we end on the same platform in terms of our vaccination rate. And today, you know, because of the vaccination rate, 
we have the confidence to open our borders. We have the confidence to open our schools. If it wasn't for vaccination, I don't think this number that we are seeing uh, coming down would not have reduced. The number would have remained high. And we can see that uh, globally as well. But that does not mean that we are out of this doldrum. We are not. Uh, COVID-19 is something that we have to live with. It's an endemic. We just have to uh, take precautions uh, for our safety and for the safety of our loved ones. And uh, all the schools that I have visited, they have worked around the clock within short period of time. They adhered uh, to the school reopening guidelines. And I'm extremely pleased that the level of preparation that has gone into each and every school. And that gives confidence uh, to the parents uh, to send their children to school. And also confidence to the kids that at least things are becoming not normal normal, but at least under new normal, they'll be able to study and continue uh, with their learning. Uh, at this point, I also want to acknowledge all the teachers for the hard work they have done. First of all, thank you very much for getting yourself vaccinated. Your vaccination means a lot to our children. You're protecting them. <clears throat> so I appreciate that. I also want to thank you for your contribution. I know behind the scene you've been working extremely hard and the story, Madam, you have just shared is an amazing story. And we would like to capture that story so that we don't lose this story uh, you know, for the future. We have to build this story. This pandemic is once in 100 years. And the story you have shared, where you operated uh, from Girmit Center, and then how you had to move somewhere else. But teaching was still at your heart. You wanted to continue uh, teaching your children. And the hard yards you had to do by connecting with uh, Turangani Koros, with the police post, making sure that the uh, weekly study packages reached your children. And at the same time, you received them and you've seen what they have done, you've marked those scripts. It's a, it's a remarkable story, uh, you know. So my heartfelt uh, thanks to um, the teachers who are sitting here. And that's why teaching is such a noble profession. It is a noble profession and you've proven it so many times. And you've proven it more so during this uh, pandemic. We hear a lot of interesting stories of that nature. I recall um, reading an article in the paper where a gentleman had to, um, you know, he had to pass so many streams and creeks and so many mountains just to deliver uh, the, the weekly study packages to, to his students. And he had to spend nights in the village as well. Now, these stories, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, will be captured, and I'm asking my team to make note of it so that we capture your story as part of our record in terms of teachers' contribution and how they uh, were our COVID uh, warriors and they continued the learnings, um, they continued with the teaching and learning process. Um, so I want to thank you all. Uh, I know there were teachers involved in the uh, vaccination verification process, teachers involved in contact tracing, Teachers in rural and outer islands, they were actually looking after the quarantine facilities. Uh, they were involved at the jetties when the shipment, uh, you know, our shipping services were bringing in food, etc. They were involved in that process as well. People don't know about this, but we know it, and we are very, very grateful to our teachers for, for doing more than what they were supposed to do. Uh, when uh, the nation called on our teachers, they stood ready to assist, and we appreciate that, and Vinakavakalebu. Uh, now, we are not over um, from our doldrum. Uh, do note that the kids, our children, will be coming back uh, to school. Uh, they will need a lot of assistance from us, from adults like us. We, they need our guidance. And you and, I, uh, you and I know very well that when it comes to our children, they listen more to the teachers than to the parents. So you are in that uh, advantage uh, position to really uh, talk to your students about COVID-19, the level of protection they require, and why they need to focus on their studies uh, if they're in years 12 and 13. 
because of uh, uh, the future. They have to focus on their studies. Um, and, and if students are going through some uh, difficult times, as we all have gone through a lot of difficulty, how we can assist them? They need to be assured that they, you know, we have to treat them like our friends. And we should be ready uh, to help them with their studies, as you have been doing during the peak of COVID. Uh, that's really amazing. But please continue your hard work. Uh, teachers, uh, I want to sh tell you that uh, Ministry has developed the Teachers Talanoa platform. You are aware of it. I'm encouraging each one of you to use the Talanoa platform. Uh, it's very important that you have a say in education. You have a voice in education. And uh, we have created that link where you can have a say on the curriculum, the, the teaching materials that we prepare. And uh, at the end of the day, whatever we prepare, you are the ones who are imparting that knowledge in the classroom. So it's very important for us to get your feedback so that we can improve the resources that we produce. So please do take some time to look at some of the materials we have placed uh, on uh, Talanoa platform. We are planning to launch the teacher helpline, uh, which will be done in the month of January. Uh, for the, uh, for the uh, teacher helpline, the primary purpose and the key purpose is to actually help teachers if they have any grievances, <clears throat> whether it's to do with their pay, whether it's to do with um, uh, teaching and learning environment, or whether it's to do with their transfers, or anything uh, that has to do with the teacher and teacher's personal uh, issues. So Talanoa, teacher's Talanoa platform is not for personal issues, it is only for professional, but teacher helpline is purely your uh, line where you can raise your concerns to us and we'll be able to solve uh, any issues that, that you may face. Uh, we do understand that teachers have also gone through some trauma uh, as we all have gone through some form of hardship. The teachers who have lost their families, they've lost their loved ones due to COVID uh, and uh, they need uh, assistance from the Ministry of uh, Education. We are your employer and we stand ready to assist you. There are still requests coming in for teacher transfers uh, at this hour, as you know, that we always operated within a window, but we are going beyond that window uh, just to accommodate some of the requests we are getting. So we stand ready to assist teachers. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We'll try and do whatever we can within our means. Yeah? Uh, so with these words, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with much uh, pleasure, uh, I hand over the items to uh, the principal of uh, Moira Methodist College and the management team, Vinaka.